This is the Motivated Business Show, hosted by me, Mark Terrell, the author of Motivated, The Reluctant Leader's Guide to Building a Business That Sets You Free. In my book, I share the seven-step process to get the measure of your business. Measure is an acronym that stands for Mirror, Evaluate, Action, Systemize, Unify, Review and Energize. On each episode, I'll be chatting to a business owner about how they stay motivated and how they've got the measure of their business. So without further ado, let's find out who's joining me on this episode. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Motivated Business Show with me, Mark Terrell. And today's guest I met uh, in lockdown. We were in an online meeting, I think, uh, and then he was kind enough to invite me on to present to his community, talk about motivation. Um, and I recently met him in person, which was at an event at a mutual friend, uh, event about territory mapping, uh, Anthony Willoughby, and it was good to meet uh, Chris then. So um, before we get stuck into the conversation with Chris and what he's, his business and what he's all about, just just remind you about my book. Um, I mentioned the seven step process that uh, is in that book on the, the podcast. So if you want to find out more about what those seven steps are, and also the two magic steps beforehand, then my book's available. And if you want to uh, contribute to the show, uh, we don't have a sponsor, then I will share a link to the buy me, buy me a coffee. And if you contribute or buy two coffees, then you'll get a free copy of that book. So I'll send that to you. Right, without further ado then, let's bring on our guest. Welcome, Chris. Hello, Mark. Thank you for having me. Lovely to be here with you. Looking forward to our conversation. Uh, before we do that, though, let's give you the opportunity to introduce yourself properly. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Bantock, and I am the uh, the founder of Agency Local, uh, which is a, a support community for marketing uh, and creative businesses. So helping them navigate the, the commercial side of actually running an agency, because uh, most, most agencies start out life because the owner has a passion or a training in something and running the business wasn't it. So um, it is a bit of a, can be a bit of a fraught route to, to actually running an agency, coming up against challenges, blockages, whatever, learning on learning as they go. And what we do is provide a support mechanism to help them on that journey. Yeah. And I guess different agency owners have got different aspirations for their business. And that's, uh, that's okay, isn't it? Not, not every agency is going to be the same. Um, oh, absolutely not. Everyone is completely different. Everybody has their own journey mm -hmm. and take their own route and their own path. So, you know, the sort of cookie cutter approach to, to agency, I don't think works because everyone is different, as you say. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the journey. Um, I'll, I'll be interested. I'm sure the listeners and uh, viewers would like to hear a bit about your journey, how you ended up um, uh, running this agency for particularly for um, branding agencies. So it'd be good to hear about that. Okay, uh, sure. My uh, my my journey really started into to agencies um, uh, where I I formed an agency. I sort of fell into agency world um, because I I came through the route of being a digital marketing consultant or stroke freelancer. Um, worked closely with two other people. One was a web development business and the other was a branding business. And we got on and together we came together to form an agency. Mm -hmm. um, I ran that agency for 12 years and managed to, uh, opportunity came to sell that in 2018. Uh, so I got curious, followed the white rabbit, sold the business in 2018 um, and left in 2019. So having been on that journey of running, growing, scaling a, an agency, and then on the journey of actually selling the business, which I learned so much going through that process, um, I felt I got a bit of value to give back to others that were on that journey. And that's really the, the premise of, of what I do now. Um, most people call it a coach or mentor. I don't like that box. 
I call myself a guide um, because coaching and mentoring are just two things that that I do. You know, it's it's advising, it's yeah. educating, it's consulting, it's motivating. That's much more than coaching. So yeah. basically, working with an agency owner, being by their side um, to help them navigate the the ups and downs of running an agency. Yeah. I like the word guide. I've mentioned it in my book, actually, about being the guide rather than the boss. Um, yes, yeah. that's what people are looking for, isn't it? And essentially, if you could be a guide, you end up being a natural leader. Uh, that's how I see it anyway. Um, yeah. And I, I can't I, I remember when we met, you were in the process of just um, moving into a new brand. So the journey is continuing. I wonder how, how you're sort of getting on with that new branding. Yes, well, yeah. As we said in our, our pre chat, it, it takes it can take a long time to to sort of change your brand and introduce a new one. And uh, that's certainly my case. Uh, what I realized was that the brand of <clears throat> the brand of agency local was um, whilst pre lockdown, it was great. And during lockdown, it was brilliant because local just meant wherever you are post lockdown. It, it, it raises more questions. So people go, well, am I local? Where's local? So decided uh, last year to change the brand, um, change the business name. So uh, from very soon, we're going to be called The Agency Adventure, um, which you know plays into the fact that it's a journey and there are twists and turns, ups and downs, etc. cetera. Um, and it's, you know, it's sort of a playful, serious but playful brand um and we are very very close to to launching that um out onto the world and with that comes some changes in the business model so we're we're, we're very much focused on those agencies that really want to learn develop grow um while still maintaining that 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 wider community element yeah so I, I, I'm guessing that your experience of your the growth in your agency is, is invaluable there. And I like the way that you've got guide and you've got the adventure. It sort of sort of all knits together, doesn't it? So um, looking forward I, I to seeing that uh, come to fruition. Well. Yeah, I, I like it, definitely. Um, so what do you, you mentioned uh, lockdown and obviously post lockdown. Um, so what, what do you see is changing in the um, agency world then? How do you see it sort of ev evolving? Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of change going on. Um, and a lot for agency owners to deal with at the moment, because, you know, being very honest with you, it's tough out there. You know, there's a lot of pressure from the economy from recession. Um, you know, there's so much uncertainty out there. So, so there's a huge number of business pressure on agency owners at the moment. Plus, the fact that that is compounded because there are other things that are changing in the market. One is, you know, yeah, the ways of working. People are still trying to work out this hybrid model. Do we come in the office? Do we come in two days a week? Do we whatever? Yeah, they're still very much struggling with with how to organize the business um, uh, to to make sure that everybody's happy and behind what they're doing. And the second thing is it's there's a big change towards instead of taking people on in the old model, which was bricks and mortar, get employees in to deliver the jobs. Um, it's changing very much into, you know, a, a looser networked structure where you know, agencies rely on close relationships with a number of freelancers, which they bring into projects. So the agency model is sort of slimming down. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's a networked model, networked cloud pod. There's all sorts of different names for it, but um, you know that is happening on top of the uncertainty that's out there as well. So, yeah. to be honest, it's interesting. It's, is it the flexibility that's important then? Is that being able to adapt to demand that's important? So you need a an agency that's able to scale up when when there's a lot of work on, and then and scale back down when there's not. Well, exactly. Because of the uncertainty, you know, the peaks and troughs in the sales cycle are huge at the moment. So agencies don't want to take on the overhead of headcount and salaries, you know, if there's going to be a, a dip uh, coming along. So it, this model gives them the flexibility, definitely, 
Um, so, you know, and, the, and they need to be agile. Yeah, interesting. Um, so let's talk a bit, bit more about um, the, the model that you run. So you said you're an, um, an agency, you work with agencies and you provide services for them. So how would you describe how you run that for and how did the people get involved with um, that setup? Uh, what, with agency local, soon to be adventure? Um, yeah, number of different ways. One, the first sort of the premium way really is to work on, on a one-to-one -one where, you know, it's a guiding, guiding services and there's a, a whole range of those depending on where the agency is on their journey, um, how much support they're going to need um and whether or not we they get access to the the agency local partners that are experts in different business disciplines mm -hmm. so that that i'm really keen to get people to understand one to one and you know if an agency owner doesn't have a business coach they need to get one coach guide whatever yeah mm -hmm. whether that's me or somebody else i don't really I don't really mind, but they do need somebody by their side to help them. Um, so that's the, that's the first one. The the second one is we're, we're just about to launch a mastermind group. I hate the term mastermind because it means different things to different people. Uh, this isn't an hour once a month mastermind. This is an intensive one day a month mastermind uh, group. Um, almost the, it, it's the board you couldn't afford. You know, it's having that collective people, that collective knowledge and wisdom all working together to help help each other. Um, and that will be sort of fully facilitated. And it will also include an element of of one to one as well in that. And the, the third one is um, one of the first steps in terms of actually beginning to work on your business is to work is to start planning is to do. Um, look at what you need to improve and the we work on a 90-day cadence um, we have planning groups that work they on that cadence there's again an element of one-to-one -one. so we work out together what the plan's going to be over the next quarter and then we meet once a month for accountability keeping on track talking through any challenges or blockages so that's mm. the, the three main ways of engaging and then there is a wider community on we use Slack for our community that any agency owner can join and it's absolutely free. So it's a way to engage other the owners of Okay. Got seem to have a little bit of a, a, a lag there in the um... Oh you're back. Um so Chris, that's really interesting. What I was gonna say was um so how does this work for you as a business owner? Because ultimately you're running a business and you're helping other business owners to grow their businesses. So how does what you do particularly sort of um, keep you motivated, I guess? Um, that's, that's interesting uh, because I, I love helping people and seeing people grow and blossom, develop um, individually, plus seeing their business grow as well and um this plays into into what i do um i think on when i did the uh the your motivational map thing um friend was quite high up on on mine and mm. that's that's definitely one of the things that that motivates me i love that the whole area of helping people either directly or creating the environment in which they can get support from other people as well. So that that whole collaboration, um, making sure that people can create opportunities and see each other, that mm. that's what what really really gets me up in the morning. Yeah, uh, and I remember our pre-show chat. Um, you talked about the importance of community. So do you want to elaborate a bit more about that? Why you see that as an important part of what you do? Um. Well, community in general is really important. And there are lots, of, in, certainly in agency world and outside of agency world, there are even more communities. And I think people need to be very careful which community they, they choose to play in. Uh, everyone will deliver something different. But being part of a community, it, it can be very lonely out there running a business. 
and having a community around you is great from you know to get over that you know you're not on your own um you know, feeling that a lot of owners have um but secondly it's it's a way to talk to other people find out what's going on get support get help you know um and and the third thing it's a way of, of learning and you know increasing your knowledge and and what what you're doing along along your sort of journey so and uh, you know it's got to have the right ethos and values that align with you i think that's a really important thing when people are looking at communities and know you know choosing which one to to play in um and it doesn't need to be one i mean people are part of lots of different communities um but the the power of the community is is immense yeah, uh, you mentioned, uh, I guess, the, 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 the mastermind part, part of bringing like-minded people together. Uh, it's had power in itself, but when you have someone that's already overcome a problem and someone's got that problem or something very similar, then you can fast-track those, those, those people so they get over those hurdles quicker. And when we learned, when we go back to our territory mapping session that we had, it's about navigating the swamps and getting over those... those um, those those mountains that are put in our way and so if we got a way that can, can navigate us around and over those obstacles quicker then you know that's better for us and it's it actually serves the community doesn't it it does it does indeed and i always remember when i you know when i was running my agency went to one of these uh, community events and we i was just chatting with sort of four or five other other agency owners and i went oh, you know what i've really got a problem with this at the moment and, and and three of them went, yeah, I've got that problem too. And I just went, oh, thank God for that. It's not my, not just me. And then the, the third, the fourth one, jumped up and said, yeah, I have that problem. And I did this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And those two things are so powerful. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, again, I'm guessing this, but um, have you found that when you bring people that are like-minded and doing similar things together, they end up finding ways to work together. So collaboration as opposed to competition being the most important thing. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And because it builds a closer relationship, you get to know that person, you get to know that person's business, what they're good at, what they're not good at. And out of that springs opportunities. You know, well, you're not good at that, but we're really good at that. Why don't we? Why don't we work together on a project? And yeah, that you know, the you know, collaboration, not competition, just runs straight straight through me. As, as Simon Sinek calls it, there's no such thing as competition. It's only worthy rivals, and you can learn a lot from worthy rivals. Um, but you know, it's not a fact that you know you don't never talk to anybody. And you know, the thing you know. Like, like a lot of the, the the networking groups have a one seat for one discipline. Well, if you've got one seat for marketing, then I mean, you know, you've got probably about you know thirty five different disciplines within the marketing world. It's crazy, you know. And everybody everybody can work together, and it's understanding each individual's strengths and weaknesses, and you know, it's building that trust. Trust is a huge word in this. You know, build the trust. To, to actually begin to work together. Yeah, well, it's about um, when they do that, when they put you in a box, they just said that, well, you're just the same as them. And that's nothing more infuriating in that, you you know, we all set our businesses up for our own reasons. Um, we're all motivated in a different way and we want our, our businesses to serve us. So just by saying that, well, you're, say for instance, business coach and I'm a business coach, that means that, you know, there's only one seat, one of you gets it and yeah. one of us doesn't. That straight away thinks, well, that means that you're both the same. And and, yeah. and we know that I'm sure you've met lots of business coaches and what have you, trainers. And all, they're all different. They do different things. And, and if we eliminate uh, that, that sort of like, um, you know, you're in the same sort of camp, but you're, you're, you know, you're only similar, but you're not certainly not the same. It sort of prevents actually those people working together. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so the one thing that you, you gave me some questions that you or some topics to talk about. Uh, and one it intrigued me and I haven't mentioned it so far because I just wanted to find out what, what it actually means was human to human. So what do you mean by 
human to human being an important part of uh, what you do? Um, yeah, I think this is, well, it, that works on a number of different levels. So, you know, one is, you know, from sort of a marketing point of view, um, you know, the, the big demarcation is B2B or B2C, you know, whereas actually what you're doing is you, you're trying to, to market to a person. So right. you know, there's that new strain of sort of H to H as a, as a, as a way of um, really elevating the emotional engagement that you can get drive through marketing mm -hmm. by, by, actually understanding the individual and so that's that's one level the second level is is really just um you know being kind to people you know and creating you know treating people as individuals um because you know as we just said you know we are all different um we've all got different backgrounds different influences different values different makeup mm -hmm. and you know it, it sort of plays into that whole area of creating a safe environment where people can do their best work and looking at you know embracing things like diversity and inclusion uh within within your workplace so there's there's the marketing side but also the actual side of wh where you're creating your business and the environment for which you, know, you can treat your your employees properly right and then if you look at it in terms of the new business model that's coming through well how do you engage you know your freelancers as humans as part of your team um so that's another different dynamic to that whole whole thing yeah well, I think what you've you've struck on there is, and there's something that I come across a lot is going back to the sort of motivational side of things. You know, everybody comes to work because they want to be appreciated, um, and whether that's a business owner, part of the team, and even your suppliers, they just want to be appreciated for what they do. And if we all learn just to appreciate what people are doing for us and give them feedback when they've done things wrong, sorry, sort of feedback when they've done things well, so that if things do go wrong in the future, then it's not just that you, you only notice when things are wrong, you, you actually notice when things are right. And I think that's a, you know, connection to human to human is actually um, just appreciating what people do for us. Um, yeah. it's, it's just something that comes up a lot. And, I, I'm, and the motivational action plan sessions that I do with my clients, that's particularly the new starters, they are straight away realizing that it's not just about the job, it's the way that they want to be treated in that job and the prospects and also, yeah, going back to just being appreciated uh, and also opportunities to grow. So. Yeah, yes, indeed. Two two most powerful words. Thank you. Yeah. Indeed, yes, <laughs> not said enough. Indeed. But then, you know, even the negative, you know, it's how you approach giving people that that feedback when things have gone wrong. You know, it's mm. that, that approach that says, okay, well, you know, this has gone wrong. You know, it, it's having that radical candor to, to have those honest and open conversations, but do it in a constructive way with the thought for the person and you know, turn it around where you can try and get some positives or learning out of that. Absolutely, yeah. Right, Chris, I'm gonna give you a time to um, just sit back a little bit. I'm just gonna do a bit of summary um, around the seven steps that I've got in my model. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Oh, it is, it's gonna play nicely, that's good. It wasn't playing nicely earlier. So what I tend to do at this point is just to summarize uh, what Chris has been talking about and sort of connect it to the seven step model that's in my book. Um, and we've all, and I always mention this one, it's so important to understand ourselves. So self-awareness is key. Um, Chris has, has, has alluded and, and shared the fact that one of his top motivators is friend. So he wants to collaborate and, and, and that's obviously important to his business and so he has built that into his business and he's allows that to, to happen and and if you're you can only do that if you're aware so mirror, the mirror stage is, is so important and often not um hasn't paid enough attention to and and when it comes to evaluation again it's, it links back to what it is that you want from your business and then evaluating where you want to take your business and there's so many businesses that um, i've come across that they're set up, yes, they're, they're transactional, they do a, a job, they solve a problem, but for the business owner, that actually has, it's not really serving them. 
So understanding what the business owners or the directors really want from the business and making sure those things are being met. And the individual roles in the business are, um, again, they are particularly suited to each person. So with regards to their skill level, the motivation, and also the things that they really want to get out of their work. And if we don't pay enough attention to that, then ultimately the business is, is going to falter. Um, so I, I think those are the key things that we've talked about here. We've, we've actually talked a, uh, a little bit about the Unify with, the, with regards to the team, understanding how we great, create a team. That's a key thing, uh, which we haven't really, we, we've sort of alluded to, and we've talked about the, the um, concept that you talk about with regards to collaborating over competition. But maybe we could talk a little bit more about that and how that sort of pans out with regards to creating a team, uh, Chris. Well, yeah, I think that that whole it, it it often boils down to the culture that you create within within a work environment, agencies specifically, and um, you know, it, it's about having that you know the, the leader of the agency or the business mm -hmm. to be able to create a vision that's a, that then becomes a shared vision. So everybody knows the journey, everybody knows the destination the path that they get there um, that every all the individuals can contribute to yeah. and that that's the first thing the second thing is is creating that safe space you know where everybody's valued everybody has a voice it's not just the voice of the owner or the leader it's it's the team and i think those two things combine to you know to unify and to move to everything forward yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the vision part because often that's not clear enough. I don't know whether you find that, but if the if the vision isn't clear enough with regards to, you know, values, behaviours, and all those sort of things, it's not. And when we talk about the vision, we shouldn't be just be talking about like some of my clients. The only thing they know about the the business they 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 work in is that they want to double their turnover, or and it's just a numbers thing. And you think, well. Yeah. Is that really inspiring? With regards to a vision, is about what, what we're trying to create here ultimately, and, and why are we doing this, and yep. what's important to us? Uh, you know, yep. what are those values that we hold dear? Are we actually going to get you know business for whatever business will take it, or actually are we going to make sure that we work with the the types of business that uh, share our values? Uh, is it about the uh, the way we deliver our our service that's important to us, and those things? And if if we get those things clear. It's not only it benefits the business, but when you've got new starters joining, it's literally crystal clear. This is why you're joining and this is where you fit in and it makes it a lot easier. So it's it, you need to spend some time there, but it's well worth the time, I believe. I, I think a number of things there. One is, you know, it it's a key way to differentiate your business. Mm -hmm. You know, we we operate in a in a you know a marketplace of a you know, where there's you know so many marketing agencies out there. And they all look the same. And so by having that clarity in terms of who you are, why you're different, who you serve, what you do is is key. So the other thing is, if you've got that, then, you know, there's a big groundswell around um, employer branding. And what I mean by that is you're attracting the right staff that, that buy into what you're doing and therefore become a cultural fit to what you're doing. And they they're naturally attracted. Uh, but the same applies for you know moving to this new model. You know, if you're if you're fighting for freelancers' time, then if they're buying into you, your vision, what you're trying to achieve, then you're you're more likely to get buy-in there as well. So it, it attracts customers, employees, and 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 staff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, time is running out, unfortunately, Chris. But I, I think before we go, I we I'm, prompted you on this but I'd, I'd like to know your views on AI um, is that having an impact on on what you do or is it early too early days at the moment um it's having a huge impact on on the the marketing creative sector as a whole mm -hmm. yes um, number of ways one customers are playing with it so it it you know, they can get things done that maybe an agency was providing as a service before. So the the that power's sort of shifting. Um, 
agencies are looking how they can in, you know use AI to deliver you know a service and hopefully a better service. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are worried that it's going to take away a lot of what what agencies do. But yeah, my my view on AI is the fact that it's it's a tool. You know, it's it's there and it's not going to go away. Um, it's it's only going to grow and develop. And sure. you know, it those that those that win will be the ones that embrace AI, understand it, and learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, and out of that, it will create jobs. You know, if you look back to when the the internet first came out, everybody, oh god, the internet, oh that's gonna that's gonna wipe out all this all these jobs and everything else like that. Our whole industry is based around the internet. Yeah. You know, um, and I I suspect it will be the same. You know, with AI. Yeah, I mean, what is, they say, like forty percent of the jobs that are going to be around in ten years' time haven't even been created. Now I don't even know what they are, so yeah. we just have yeah. to wait and see. But as you said, we just need to keep abreast of what's going on and try and keep ahead of it. But uh, that's going to be challenging itself. Uh, so, Chris, thank you for your time today. I really enjoyed the, the, our, our chat, and um, I hopefully we'll catch up soon, uh, maybe in person. Yep. But um, for now, I'll um, let you go and do your do your best work. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity. Really enjoyed the chat. See you. There we go then. So that's uh, Chris Bantock. And so if you're uh, running a, a marketing branding agency, then um, he's your man to talk to. Um, get in touch, and I'm sure he would be more than happy to um, help you if that's what you need. Just before we go then, just to remind you of the book, I've shared the seven-step model, which uh, is in that book. And also, if you would like to contribute to the show creation, then there's a buy me a coffee in the comments below or in the show notes if you're watching this on replay on YouTube. And if you buy two, me two coffees, then I will be more than happy to send you a copy of my book to say thank you. So there we are, that's another episode done. I think that's episode 10, so we've got to double, double figures. Thank you for those that joined us live. And if you catch this on replay, don't hesitate to leave any comments for, for me or for Chris. Um, we would be more than, likely to, uh, more than delighted to answer any questions and help you whenever we can. For now, um, have a great day, take care of yourselves, and I will see you very soon on the next episode.